Hello, my name is Brian Lewis and I'm an instructor at JTNS. Today our presentation is going to cover stored energy hazards. But before we get started, what I'd like to do is ask you to take some time, press pause, talk about any near misses or accidents you may have had in the past month, and then when you're finished, simply play, press play and continue with the presentation. Okay, today we're going to talk about stored energy hazards in public works and in utilities. So we're going to talk a lot about water pressure. We're going to talk about gas pressure with the upper explosive limit and the lower explosive limit. And we're going to talk about sewer pressure in force main sewers. Now the upper explosive limit and the lower explosive limit are simply areas where in between those two there is enough fuel and enough oxygen to have an ignition and cause a fire or an explosion. The best way to think about this, I think, is thinking about the manual chokes on lawnmowers and small engines. So, if you have a cold engine, you turn the choke all the way up. When the engine gets warm, you pull the manual choke down. Outside of the upper explosive limit, there's too much fuel and not enough oxygen. On the lower side of the lower explosive limit, there's not enough fuel and too much oxygen. A lot of times when we talk about stored energy, we traditionally talk about lockout and or tag out. But along with that concept, we want to make sure we don't forget to include job briefings where we talk about what is important to accomplish uh, the task we're on as well as how we need to stay safe while doing that task. We also need to know the history of the system. Now what I encourage is to know a overall view or a 10,000 mile look at the system as well as the particular or specific part of the system you're working on. We also want to include job hazard analysis or job safety analysis. When we talk about these words and acronyms, uh, we create a, a, a jargon, words that not everybody uses. So all a job hazard analysis or job safety analysis is is a piece of paper with three columns where we talk about what a task is, what are the risk or potential hazards in the middle column, and in the last column, we say, what are we going to do safety-wise to protect ourselves from these hazards? Pretty simple, straightforward document to make. Some other things that we want to consider when we talk about bleeding lines and testing are, are the lines buried? Are we talking about lift stations? Are we talking about a water wastewater plant? Or are we talking about regulator stations. Uh, there again, that 10,000 mile above view of the system as well as knowing the specific part of the system you're working on is really important. And that's where people with a history of the system uh, and some uh, knowledge come into play and help out considerably. Uh, most, if not all, public utility workers need to know how the system works. They need to understand the situation they're in, whether it's an urgent type situation or whether it is a, a planned modification or update to the system. We need to know the proper procedures, uh, the limits of the lines and the equipment. Now when we talk about procedures, there are written procedures, but part of being a professional is knowing the nuances that are almost impossible uh, and indeed difficult to put down on paper. That's why we have on-job training and mentors out in the field. Now when we talk about double block and bleed, that's a form of lockout tagout, just like uh, jack stands are for cars. What we typically do with double block and bleed is we uh, close two valves, put a chain and a lock on them, and then open 
uh, valve in between those, lock it open so that if uh, the valves do not seat correctly, which they almost never do, uh, anything that makes it out uh, either discharges to the ground or to the air. Blanks can be used also uh, to put in a blind and make sure that uh, water, wastewater, or gas does not go through. Pressure. Well, we all talk about pressure and we talk about PSI. Don't forget the pressure is the is the force that's applied in in our case that we're talking about pipes, the, the internal part of the pipe. And um, we need to control it. And we've talked about lockout tag out, electrical lockout tag out by opening up a circuit and putting a lock on it, or we just talked about double block and bleed. So that you can test, make sure that uh, the pressure is relieved so you can work on it without releasing the stored energy unexpectedly. Water pressure is measured in pounds per square inch. Now I don't know who has 75 pounds uh, per square inch of water pressure in their home but most people keep it between 50 and 60. You get much more than that and, and what happens is uh, you end up sweating some pipe on occasion or, or using pecs and connectors uh, because you get too much over 55, 60 pounds of pressure and you really can do damage to uh, residential and business uh, water systems. So water pressure uh, on the system in, in, a water or weight, uh, in a water system can be as much and more than 125 PSI. And water lines can range from 2 inch to 12 inch. Now, 125 PSI on a 2 inch pipe is one thing, but because of the amount of surface area on the inside of a 12 inch pipe and the amount of water needed to pl put uh, 125 PSI or more, it's a, just a great deal more stored energy in that water. And it has to do with the pressure as well as the volume. That's what we're talking about, the pressure and the volume needed to make that pressure on the pipes. Now, sewer, it's just a, a pretty tough and pretty dirty job. And uh, you can have everything from gravity flow or head pressure on a pipe to a force main that's under pressure. You also have uh, lift stations and residential E1 pumps. There again, uh, you can use traditional lockout to open up a, an electrical circuit and apply a lock. Uh, you can also need to double block and bleed and uh, to release the pressure also. So force main sewers. Uh, you've got to consider head pressure like we spoke about in the last slide. Uh, how to relieve that head pressure uh, which can be significant if it's a big enough pipe and there's a, a, a lot above grade uh, as far as how many feet the pipe is. Pumps where and what kind uh, it's not stored energy, but we do need to realize we need proper PPE. We need to think about bloodborne pathogens, hepatitis B vaccinations. There again, may not be stored pressures, but they are hazards we need to consider when we deal with sewers and force main sewers. Like I said, traditional lockout tagout is really important. Uh, we want to open up the circuit, apply a lock, have our name and information on there so we can identify the lock as ours. Don't forget block and bleed, blanks, skillet blanks, uh, monocle blanks, all those things can be appropriately used to uh, reduce in, uh, the pressure. Uh, you can also, in certain instances, remove sections of pipe, uh, especially when you're dealing with gas. Um, remember we talked about the lower explosive limit and the upper explosive limit and uh, that's really important. A little bit of gas mixed in with oxygen can go a long way to creating an explosion or igniting a fire. Now most of the time when we talk about residential and business gas pressures we're talking about 15 to 20 psi really very little or relatively small amount of pressure. Um, now when we transport uh, natural gas. The, the high pressure pipes can range in excess of 800 PSI. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. 
So another thing that we need to consider when we deal with natural gas or propane in some instances is that natural gas is lighter than air and in certain uh, atmospheric conditions you would certainly expect it to rise above your head. And propane gas is heavier than air and in certain atmospheric conditions you would expect it to find the lowest point. Uh, and that's really important if you're talking about trenching and excavation or if you're talking about a confined space where you would expect these gases to accumulate and uh, keeping that in mind if there's a rupture uh, that would could potentially go a long way to keeping you safe. So we talk about fire and explosion hazards. We need to realize there are several sources of ignition. Um, anything that's hot, any kind of open flame, safe electronics and tr electronics that are intrinsically safe. In other words, the uh, battery or power circuitry is uh, sealed off from atmospheric conditions. Static electricity, grounding all play a part when you're dealing with natural gas. And there have been instances where uh, a nicked or ruptured pipe just due to the uh, friction of the gas escaping the pipe or the static electricity that has been created can ignite the gas. So when we talk about uh, having a summary, what we'd like you all to take away from this presentation is know the pressure and the size of the lines you're working with. Respect those pressures. Keep them in the front of your mind. Remember lockout, tagout, double block and bleed is really important. Uh, always monitor the air quality when you're working with sewer systems. Besides the LEL, UEL, uh, there's hydrogen sulfide and oxygen. Uh, content is important. So keep that in mind and uh, please stay safe and realize all that is important there. Uh, from everybody at JTNS, I want to say thank you for uh, paying attention and participating, hopefully. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact your JTS representative and uh, we'll do our very best to answer your questions. If we do not know the answer right off the top of our head, We'll do our very best uh, to research and get back with you with those answers. Thank you, and once again, have a great day until we see you next month. Bye.